Hey guys, welcome to Honey Rock Acres. Today's video is going to be inside instead of outside in the sweltering heat, and we're finally going to do a little upgrade on the house. And so I'm going to take this gloomy, out of date dining room, brighten it up, put some new colors on it, and we're going to do a board and batten wall. And we're going to try to bring this thing into more of a modern farmhouse look. So I'm going to turn this room. To this. All right, so getting started, pretty much the whole house are earth tones, and we're looking at bringing things up into more of a, you know, modern farmhouse look. And we're going to start with this room because it doesn't get used a ton. It's also going to be probably the least expensive room in the house to do because of its size and lack of complexity. Look at those little baby faces. So obviously this is gonna be a multi-day project because I'll be working on it in my uh, spare time, but I've got the materials, most of it. My wife and I are still trying to decide on paint colors uh, and then we're gonna get this room transformed. But by this point, you've probably already seen the colors. So tell me what you think. So I've already spent some time doing some measurements and we're gonna do uh, sort of a board and batten style. Um, right at three feet, we got nine feet ceilings. We decided to go at three feet, which is roughly the size of most chair rails, uh, which is fitting in the dining room. Uh, we have young kids, which is weighed in on how and what we're gonna do. Uh, and my wife and I have been wanting to do a little bit of updates in the house since we bought it. So house is a little over 20 years old it's had almost no updates done to it uh, and we're wanting to kind of bring some life back to it so there's two things that actually need to be repaired i don't know how well they're going to show up on camera but there's a little bit of roof or ceiling that needs to be redone uh, the dormers on top of this house leaked at some point in the past and so there's a little bit of water damage up there so i'm gonna clean that up and repaint the ceiling uh, and then in this wall again I don't know how well it's showing up because of how dark it is but there's water that had run down that drywall and kind of called this the paint peel so I'm going to scrape that I'll probably have to do a little bit of drywall work to smooth that back out uh, and then we'll get it painted and fixed but I'll show you guys all right apologize for the shadows but we at least have some light now and you can see where some of this paint is peeled off the sheetrock. The good news is it doesn't look like it did any damage to the sheetrock, but I am going to have to do some work up here or feather the paint or something. start getting this baseboard pulled loose and uh, I'm gonna try to do that without damaging the drywall even though we're gonna have a four inch baseboard when we when we're done so we'll cover this but I don't want a bunch of damage back there so I'm gonna go around and try to cut the caulk get that all pulled loose and we'll see how it goes All right, I was gonna try to cheat and take off the baseboard and the crown mold in one piece, 
but they used like two and a half inch brad nails on this thing. Like they were afraid the crown mold was gonna fall off or something, or the quarter round, I mean. So I gotta get those out of there. I'll probably just cut them off and sand it smooth, but my intent is to salvage as much of this, if not all of it, uh, as I can, because I'm most likely gonna use it again. All right, so Father managed to get the baseboard off. They used the same nails. They used these two and three quarter brad nails on the whole thing. And I got this piece off. I'm trying to save it because I won't rip all the baseboard out in the house even as we go. And so I'd like to have a few pieces in case I need to repair any. Um, I did, unfortunately, break just the end of this one, um, but it's not irre it's not unusable. Uh, and the rest of it's still in good shape, but I got a lot of these little nails to get out. I will say, this is gonna be your friend when you need to cut some of those nails off because inevitably you're gonna have to cut some of them off. Get you a multi-tool, they're cheap. This one came from Harbor Freight. I've had it for years. So, anyways, I'm gonna get this cleaned up. I'm gonna get the rest of them out of here and uh, that'll probably take the rest of my time I have today. At this point, I've already gone through and spackled all the holes in the wall. And at this particular point in the corner where we had water damage, I've had to go over and add several layers of spackle. And what I'm trying to do here is actually feather it into the existing wall. That way, whenever we go to paint over it, you can't see any sort of issues. Now be sure to take your time with this part because any imperfections here are likely to show up in your Now, depending on how much work you're having to do on the drywall, you can start with a high grit sandpaper such as a 120 or even an 80, um, but I would highly suggest that you go back and finish it off with like a 220 or higher. That way everything is smooth whenever you get ready to paint. So here I'm getting ready to install the baseboard. And there are a multitude of ways of doing this. And coming from an amateur, I'm not gonna tell you that this is the right way. But what I did here was get all of my baseboards level. That way later on, I knew everything around the room was level. So what I'm doing here is a good old fashioned knock test and I'm looking for the studs. You wanna make sure that when you're driving your nails for your baseboard, that you're hitting studs. If not, that stuff will easily fall off the wall. And if you're not comfortable doing this, you can get a stud finder for really cheap. So all of the material that I bought was eight foot. And what that means is on two of my walls, I'm gonna have to overlap some of the boards. And so what you're seeing me do here is actually mark my 45 uh, because I'm gonna overlap these boards in a joint and just butt joining those boards together won't make a clean transition. And on this other end, I'm just cutting a 45 to go into the corner of the room. If you decide to use MDF for this part, make sure that you wear a mask. MDF is disgusting and the dust goes everywhere. So if you're cutting or sanding on MDF, make sure you have a good mask on.
if you're gonna have to overlap the boards like I am, it's best to overlap those on a stud. The reason for that is because you're gonna wanna overlap those over that stud and then nail through the boards into the stud. Now this is optional, but as you can see, I chose to glue the joint and then nail through it into that stud just to try to keep it tight. By this point, I've already got the chandelier up, and if you're not comfortable doing the electrical work, just have an electrician come in and take care of that for you. Now most people will probably be able to skip this step. I'm having to paint the ceiling because as I've said, we had some water damage, and since I had to do some repair on the ceiling, I wanted to make sure all the colors match. The other thing that might cause you to have to paint the ceiling is if you change the chandelier, and the base that connects to the ceiling leaves a ring or something on that. You might have to address it. And this may be obvious, but if you're gonna paint, it's probably best to paint from top down. That way, if you have any drips or anything, you're gonna be painting over that anyways. All right, so finally got the ceiling painted. Hopefully we'll get away with just one coat. Uh, and uh, I decided to go ahead and purchase and install a light fixture because it was too dark in here. So I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but the lighting is already much improved. So next step is going to be painting the walls, the upper two thirds. And we decided to go with this color. So I don't know how well they show up on camera, but we got a darker blue, kind of a greenish color, and then sort of a grayish blue. And this grayish blue color is what we uh, settled on. So that'll be our next step, but it's not gonna happen for now. Look at the progress. Hey guys, welcome back. It's another day working in the house trying to get our dining room finished up. So we got the ceiling finished, of course the light fixtures up, and we're ready to do paint on the walls now. So the color we're using is called Rare Gray. What you'll see when we're finished is actually Valspar Ovation series paint. Uh, that's gonna be on the top section. The bottom section is actually gonna be a trim paint, uh, and we're about to get started. I'm hoping to be finished up today. If not today, we'll probably get finished up tomorrow, uh, which will make this about a four day project. Uh, just working when I can on it. So uh, this has been pretty quick, not too difficult. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. As I said before, when I paint, I like to go from the top down. That way, if I get any runs in the paint, I can continue to smooth those out as we go. And I like to start with what I call cutting in. Uh, and what I'm doing is trying to create a really tight line against the seams uh, where you're gonna have a change in paint color, such as the roof, uh, at the floor, or around any of your casings. This is really just personal preference, but I like to do that first because I can use the roller to sort of blend the two together. You'll notice that I'm painting here before I get the board and batten up. I chose to do this because I thought it would be easier to get a paint line and not have to worry about cutting in on the top of that trim.
And what I'm doing here is I'm putting construction adhesive on the back of these battens. And the reason for this is because I'm not gonna be able to hit studs on every one of these. And I wanna make sure that they're not gonna come off the wall. Now this is a DAP brand construction adhesive. And I'll leave links in the description for all of this. I started on the wall with the window because I think that's where most people's eyes are gonna be drawn. And I started with centering a batten under that wall. And I went back and forth on spacing here. And I ended up with an approximately 18 inch base between each of these battens. The reason I say approximate is because I didn't wanna to have to cut around around the outlets or anything. And I wanted to make sure that everything sort of looked even. When you step back, you're not gonna actually be able to see any sort of discrepancies. So take some time here and just work your way around the room and see what spacing works out for you. So I'm just checking my work here, but if you get your bottom board level and you cut all of your verticals the same height, then you should be able to just lay your top board on there and tack it in. But it's always best to just double check your work. And just a note here, I did not glue that top board because just like the baseboard, I just tacked it into the studs. After you're done tacking all your boards in, spend some time and go back and fill all the holes with some wood filler. This is an important step to make sure you get a good clean look. And just like with the spackling, make sure you take some time to get this sanded nice and smooth and use a low grit sandpaper to make sure that you get a good transition. The kids decided to show up and make sure I was staying on track. So I'm starting to apply some caulk here, but I made a mistake. I did not realize that the caulk that I was using actually dries clear. The reason this ended up being an issue is that when I went and painted, it didn't match right up against the wall. And so you'll see later on, I actually go back and re-caulk this top seam with a white caulk. Now I did two different things here when spreading the caulk. I started with using just my finger to actually spread and get a good even seam. And I use water to keep the caulk from just sticking to my fingers real bad. And then I used a caulk tool, which is just a little rubber piece uh, to get a good crisp line against the wall. finally got everything sanded and cleaned up. It's 
important that you vacuum up all the dust and wipe everything down with like a damp rag, especially if you spent time sanding right over the surface you're getting ready to paint. So I originally painted this bottom section with a trim paint. And my thought here was that if the bottom was going to be married into the, all of the door casings, that it just makes sense that all the paint match. Uh, but this was a big mistake. So if you're not familiar with like sheens in paint, most of your walls are going to be like a satin or an eggshell or even a flat. And a lot of people use a semi-gloss for the trim. This paint is a semi-gloss and I think that I had something wrong with this particular batch because it did not lay well. All right guys, so I've got to do a little bit of explaining here. So I'm having to start over on this bottom section. Uh, I finished painting this wall, the lower section here, uh, more than a day ago. And just to be honest, it, it looks terrible. Uh, I'm very happy with how this upper section has turned out. Uh, this lower section has been a nightmare. Um, now, and I'm specifically just talking about the paint. So I got a, a an oil-based enamel, which you know, I'm a bit of an amateur with painting. I've painted for a while, but knowing all the differences and all that stuff, I'm, I'm an amateur with that. Um, but I just went and got a door and trim paint because I wanted to paint the trim and I wanted everything to match. And I thought, well, it makes sense. Um, but in talking with some people, I suspect that I got a bad batch of paint um, because it's just simply not, it's not going on well. It's, it's wanting to clump a little bit. It's, it's extremely thick. And, you know, I did learn that I can sort of thin that out with mineral spirits, but uh, I've never done that. And I'm just not happy with the way that that's looking anyways. Uh, so the, the, and the other issue is that it's been more than 24 hours at this point and it's still really, really tacky. Like it's not curing. Um, so I'm going to end up sanding this down and redoing it. One other thing that I'm really unhappy about with this paint is that it doesn't cut in well, like it, because it wants to kind of stand up and not like spread like it's supposed to. Uh, it, it looks like a four-year-old did the painting on the top of this. Uh, I'm extremely unhappy with the way that looks. Uh, so once this all cures finally, hopefully it does sooner than later, uh, I'm going to sand it smooth. I'm not going to like sand it back to bare wood, but I am going to sand it smooth because it's got a lot of like basically runs in it um, and brush strokes and it, the, just the whole thing looks terrible. Uh, and so I'm going to sand that back smooth and redo it. But I did go back and I got uh, the same base that we used to tint for the upper section, uh, which is just a, a regular satin acrylic. Uh, instead of getting it tinted, we just got an ultra white satin. I'm going to redo the bottom with that. Um, I really wanted that sort of sheen on the bottom and the kind of the durability of the semi-gloss. Um, but without having to spend an exorbitant amount of time recovering this section and, and sanding and touching it all up, uh, that semi-gloss is going to show all those imperfections and we don't want that. So. I'm going to actually go back through and, and sand it up, clean it up really good, and we're going to go over it with the satin. But in the meantime, since that's taking way too long to cure, we're going to do the rest of the room, and then we'll come back to this when we can. What's up, buddy? Um, this broke, this, this broke off, this tire broke off, this Can you fix it? No. Maybe I can help you fix it. I want you to help me. Okay, I'll help you.
right, so we're finally finished with this project. This has been an exciting project. And I truly believe that this is a beginner friendly effort. So it did take me longer than expected. I was originally thinking this would be about three days. Uh, some setbacks on the paint and a few things, a few little simple mistakes that I made sort of set back and then just scheduling. Uh, three kids, farm, you know, I'm busy. But this was still less than a week. It's a really easy, really simple project. Uh, you could do all of this with basic tools. Uh, and just a little bit of patience. And, you know, I really think that this is a project that uh, anybody could do. And my wife and I were ecstatic about how this turned out. It really transforms this room. Pretty affordable project, um, excluding the chandelier. Uh, we did this whole project for under 400 bucks. Uh, so, and that's, that's paint and materials. Anyways, hopefully maybe you found this helpful. And if you've got any questions, feel free to ask. I'll share what I know. And uh, you guys have a blessed day. Thanks for watching.